In this video, I'm going to review the Lava 25mm FT18 Ultra Macro Lens. I'm going to talk about the design of the lens, the image quality, the build quality, and at the end, I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this lens. So throughout the video, I'm going to show you some of the Ultra Macro sample photos I took using this lens. But to keep it more interesting, I'm not going to tell you what are the objects that I'm shooting. I give you a hint, they are all photography related objects, so it could be a camera, it could be a camera lens, or something similar. So I let you guess what are the objects that I'm shooting, and um, I will show you the answer at the very end of this video. So let's start with the review. Last month, I was chatting with the guys from Venex Optics. So they are the company that create all the lower lenses. And they told me that they are going to release a new ultra macro lens and asked me if I'm interested in trying it out. Of course, I won't reject this wonderful chance. So a couple of days later, I got this lens show up at my door. So what is an ultra macro lens and how is it different from the normal macro lens? The normal macro lens normally can take a photo at 1 to 1 magnification ratio which means the object you're shooting when it projects the image onto the image sensor the size it projects onto the sensor will be exactly the same as the real life object so that's a 1 to 1 ratio and that's what a normal macro lens is so for ultra macro lens the magnification ratio go larger than 1 and with this Lower 25mm f2.8 ultra macro lens, their magnification can go to um, between 2.5 to 5 times the magnification. So that is like up to 5 times higher magnification than a normal macro lens. To show you an example, I have this uh, little desktop tripod thing here. And this is what it looks like in real life. And now I'll show you a photo that I shot with a normal macro lens. So this is what it looks like when you um, shoot a photo using a normal macro lens. And next I'm going to show you the sample photos I shot using the ultra macro lens. And this is the photo I shot at 25 times magnification. And then next photo I shot at 5 times magnification. So now we can see the difference between the normal 1 times macro photos and the 5 times ultra macro photos. And this is what this uh, Lawa 25mm ultra macro lens is all about. Since the official production hasn't been started when they shipped me the uh, pre-production sample, um, so the lens itself comes in a pretty random couple of box, but they told me the lens itself is a production quality lens. The Lawa 25mm f2.8 ultra macro lens is actually the second ultra macro lens from Lawa. Uh, the first one is a 60mm f2.8 2x ultra macro lens and this new lens can go from 25 times to 5 times magnification. But unlike the 60mm ultra macro lens, this new 25mm ultra macro lens does not support infinity focus. What it means is this lens can only be used to shoot ultra macro photos and it cannot be used to shoot normal photo uh, at infinity focus. This is actually pretty common for ultra macro lens because the optical design that is optimized for very very close focus is completely different from the lenses that's designed for far focus. The Laowa 25mm f2.8 ultra macro lens is made of metal. It feels very solid and very well made. Even the lens cap is made of metal and it feels very nice when you try to put it on and take it off. If you have watched my previous Lawa 7.5mm f2.8 lens review, you may remember I was complaining about the lens cap on that Lawa 7.5mm lens. It was quite hard to put it back on and take it off. Uh, fortunately, with this lens, it's completely different. The lens cap is made of metal. It feels very nice and to put it on and take it off is very, very easy. Now there are only two things you can control on this lens, there's the focusing ring and there's the aperture ring. I'm not sure if um, calling it the focusing ring is the right word because um, it's actually the focusing ring is used to control the magnification of the lens. As you can see when it's uh, fully collapsed it is at 2.5 times magnification and when you fully extend it now it is 5 times magnification. So basically you choose the magnification ratio you want to shoot at and that magnification ratio will determine what is the focus distance. 
and that means you just basically move your camera up forward and backward until you got the uh, object in focus. Now one thing you have to be, be careful is that um, you may notice that when I am turning the focusing ring and changing the magnification ratio, the lens would extend quite a bit. Um, and because when you are shooting macro photos, your lens would be quite close to the object that you are um, shooting. So when you are changing the magnification ratio, make sure you don't poke the object that you are shooting by the front of the lens. The aperture ring starts from f2.8 and is one click per stop all the way to f22. Um, at f11, and I assume that is f22, there's no number marking on it, but uh, you can feel the click. And thank the maker, they didn't make the aperture ring a de-click aperture ring or I'll be so annoyed about it. If you have shot macro photos before, you probably know that one of the biggest challenge when shooting macro photos is that the front of the lens may block the ambient light and also cast shadow on the object that you are shooting because the camera lens get very very close to the object. Fortunately with the Lawa 25mm ultra macro lens, the lens barrel has quite a small diameter, especially the front. So the chance of it uh, blocking the ambient light and casting shadow on the object is quite a lot smaller than the typical macro lens. The focusing ring turns quite smoothly. It is a little bit tight but uh, I think that is quite reasonable because it controls the magnification ratio so I probably don't want it to be able to turn too easily. So overall the build quality is definitely very good and exceed my expectation consider the price of the lens is only US$399. While I'm very happy with the build quality of this lens, I'm not sure if I can say the same thing about the aesthetic design of the lens. It's not like there's something really wrong with the uh, design of the lens, but it's just not a very pretty looking lens. And I think a lot of those are just down to some of the very minor details on the lens. For example, I quite like the fonts they choose, um, they use for the, the magnification numbers here, but I really don't like the very generic fonts they choose for the aperture ring and you know the fonts they print at the bottom of the lens. And have a look at the landscape. While it feels very nice and it fit onto the lens perfectly, there's no logo, there's no marking on the landscape. It just feel like it's a prototype. And actually, this is the first thing that I compared to Lawa when I first received the lens. So if you bought the retail version and if you find out the landscape is actually look quite a bit better than this, then I will claim the credit and you can feel free to leave me a thank you comment below. If you say Richard, it's just a camera lens, who care how the lens looks as long as it takes nice photos? Well, yeah, maybe I can't really argue with you, but that doesn't stop me from wanting the lens to look better. Now let's talk about the image quality. This Lawa 25mm f2.8 ultra macro lens is a pretty sharp lens from 25 times magnification all the way to 5 times magnification. Even when I'm shooting at the maximum aperture 2.8, the images are still pretty sharp. I don't really notice any color fringing at all even when I'm shooting at maximum aperture. And surprisingly, there's not much vignetting as well, despite its uh, small lens barrel and small front element. When you are shooting at f2.8, the optical image quality is not a problem at all. The problem is that you are shooting at a very close focusing distance and at f2.8, the depth of fields now become ridiculously shallow. Even when I had the camera on a tripod and I was shooting a completely static object, I was having a hard time to get perfect focus because a slightly tiny touch of the camera or the object would change the uh, photo from completely perfectly sharp to out of focus very very easily. So what it means is that you will probably be shooting at a very small aperture. Most of the photos I shot uh, for this video were shot at around f16. And even when I'm shooting at f16, the depth of field is still pretty shallow. And that brings to the next point. When you are shooting with this lens, you need light. And you need lots of light. Especially when you are not shooting outside on a bright sunny day. 
So the best way is to use a ring flash or some LED lighting that's specially designed for macro photography so that you can get a uh, even illumination of the object that you are shooting. Unfortunately, the lens doesn't have auto aperture. What it means is that when you stop down to f16, if you are shooting using a DSLR camera and you are looking through the optical viewfinder, the viewfinder will become a lot dimmer because you are now uh, looking through a f16 aperture. So in that case, using a constant light source would be better than camera flash because the constant light source will light up the scene all the time instead of just for the a brief of second when you are shooting photos. Otherwise, switch to live view or if you are shooting with a mirrorless camera, then it's not really a problem at all because the camera will automatically uh, boost the brightness of the image to a lot brighter so you can still see the um, composition and everything clearly. So for me, I was using two of the Yongnuo YN303 LED lights. So with those two smallish LED lights, I was shooting at between, I think ISO, normally between ISO 1000 to ISO uh, 3200, or actually some of the photos I was even shooting at ISO 6400 as well, because, um, yeah, because of the angle, and some of those I was shooting at F22. So yeah, you do definitely need some light to light up your scene if you are planning to shoot the photos indoor. Overall, I don't think there's much I can complain about the image quality from this lower 25mm ultra macro lens. If you find out the image quality of your photos are not so good, I think it's probably your fault. Uh, either you haven't got enough light so your ISO goes to the roof, or you probably didn't focus it properly uh, because a little bit movement in the camera or the subject will completely change from perfectly focused to completely out of focus. And just like shooting any macro photos, make sure your shutter speed is quite fast because a tiny bit of movement in your camera or your subject would also create a lot of blur in the photo. So what do I think about this lens? Would I recommend it to someone who want to just start doing macro photography? I would say probably not if you are just starting photography or just starting macro photography for two reasons. First, if you are just starting photography, you probably don't have too many camera lenses in your camera bag. So if you buy a normal macro lens like you know those 90mm 2.8 macro lens or even the lower 60mm f2.8 ultra macro lens, you can use those lenses to shoot normal things. And uh, normally they are pretty good uh, portrait lens as well. So you can buy one lens and use it for portrait and also for macro. But if you buy this uh, 25mm ultra macro lens, you cannot use it to shoot normal things. You definitely cannot use it to shoot portrait. So you are limiting yourself to only shooting ultra macro photography using this lens. So this is probably not the best suggestion when you don't have many camera lens in your bag. And the second reason is that um, macro photography is not a very easy thing to do uh, because your camera is very close to the object. So any tiny amount of you know camera shake or uh, the changes between your camera and your object distance or any tiny mistake you make will show up very, very obviously in the photo. And uh, with an uh, ultra macro lens, it just make everything become even harder. So yeah, I may not really recommend you to start macro photography with a ultra macro lens. But having said that, if you already have a bit of uh, macro photography experience, um, either you already have a macro lens at home or you borrow someone's macro lens and um, shoot a bit of macro photography before and you quite enjoyed it and if you want to have even more fun then I would definitely recommend you to check out this lower 25mm ultra macro lens. When I'm shooting with this ultra macro lens I suddenly feel like I become the Ant-Man, you know that superhero. So I feel like I have shrunk myself into something very very small. So looking at the world, the world suddenly become a gigantic world, everything become gigantic an ordinary object while it's enlarged to a gigantic scale 
it looks completely different and looks very interesting as well. So I can actually spend hours shooting some very ordinary objects and end up uh, having a lot of fun because the photos I got looks very different and just surprisingly cool. So look at all the sample photos I've been showing you in this review. They are just all pretty typical uh, camera gear I found in my camera bag or somewhere in my room. Uh, but the result, you know, I shot using the ultra macro lens looks very interesting. I, and I know a lot of you have been waiting for the answer for those photos. So I'm now going to show you um, the answers for all those sample photos. So how many photos do you guess correctly? Uh, leave a comment below. I'm very interested to know how many photos you managed to guess correctly. I don't think I'll be carrying this Lauer 25mm Ultra Macro lens with me um, in my camera bag every day. But I'll be really happy to keep a copy of this lens at home because you know anytime when I got bored at home, I got nothing to do, then I can bring out this lens, um, put it onto my camera, and I can start shooting any object I got at home. Pretty much any object with uh, interesting texture or pattern or uh, color combination could turn out to become some very interesting photo. Uh, if you spend a bit of time trying to look at it through a different angle, so yeah, this is definitely a very fun lens that I can imagine myself. Uh, I'll be shooting a lot of photo with this lens. Thank you very much for watching this video. Maybe leave a comment below and tell me what you feel about this lens. Do you think it's a lens that you want to buy? If not, maybe let me know what's the reason as well. And it seems like Lauer is the company that like to create some very unique different lenses for the market from time to time. So do you have some cool idea about some very unique lenses that you may want Lauer to create? If you have some cool idea, definitely leave a comment below because I'm sure the guys from Lauer will be checking this video and the comments. You never know, maybe one day they will make a lens that is exactly what you have been wanting for a long, long time. So thanks again for watching this video. I hope you like this video and find it useful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing and I will see you next time.